Howdy partners. We are back in the nursery greenhouse for a farm tour because a lot has changed since the last time we did one of these. And um, it's starting to look really sexy around here. Everything's growing way better than it did last year. If you go back to the April farm tour of 2023, there was a lot of issues with these tomatoes and all the other crops we have in here. But uh, it's shaping up to be a really great growing season. And these tomatoes are all grafted this year. We had a lot of problems with our grafting last year where I only got about 30% success rate. And this year I got about 85 because we tried a couple new tricks to make it work. So every single tomato in here is grafted and growing like crazy. These were planted uh, April 8th and today is the 26th. So basically about two weeks and they're already knee high. And some of them even have fruit. This guy right here is actually starting to fruit already. So we are looking phenomenal for our early tomatoes and um, basically early greenhouse crops. And over here we've got our zucchini also growing way better than last year. Um, we planted this and the cucumbers at the same time and covered them with row cover. So they stayed extra protected for a couple weeks. Um, and we still have been heating this greenhouse with propane, but very, very little propane. It has been a really nice and warm spring, but um, I've also kind of learned how to heat more efficiently with propane. But we're looking really, really good for uh, the season. And all of our uh, inner plants are growing really good. We're gonna be harvesting this lettuce any week, or basically within a week. These French breakfast radishes over here are gonna be harvested soon. And we already started harvesting some of that purple bok choy in the background because um, some of it's starting to bolt and go to seed. But all in all, it's really exciting. Um, and I can't wait to show you the rest of the farm. All right, so now we're in what I like to call the redneck nursery, which is basically just a low tunnel under the fancy greenhouse that we have here. And I call it that because it's really cheap. It's just little bit of plastic on these hoops and I heat it at night um, with an electric heater but it works great um, what we've got going on in here is a lot of paper pot trays which I'm real excited about we upgraded to the paper pot system this year and I think it's gonna be a game changer we've already done a few plantings with it still kind of learning out working and working out some of the kinks but all of our onions shallots Green onions, dill, cilantro, and even some of our spinach and hocker eye turnips are going to be grown with the paper pot system this year. It's growing great. I'm loving the uh, drop seeder, um, which plants all of these flats in just minutes. You don't have to use, you know, put one seed per cell. Um, and then we've got tons of celery and our normal spring crops growing really, really well this year. Everything's just doing a lot better this year, basically just because I've learned a little bit of, uh, worked out some of the kinks that we had last year. So, um, real excited. And now I'm gonna show you some of the other greenhouses that are looking absolutely gorgeous right now. So right here, we've got some of our greenhouse cucumbers and interplanted radishes. These radishes will be out in a week or two, but these cucumbers are doing absolutely phenomenal this year. Again, because we covered them with row cover, so they were a little bit warmer at night than everything else, and it seems to be paying off because they are just taking off right now. We only planted these about 10 days ago, and they're already this tall. They're gonna start growing like a foot a week any day now. We're gonna start stringing them up, and uh, we should have cucumbers sometime in May, I'm hoping this year, because last year I stunted them really bad because I was still learning how to heat this greenhouse correctly. Um, because I had it too cold a couple nights. And with cucumbers, they're very sensitive to that and they get stunted if you do that kind of stuff. So um, thrilled to see the results on cucumbers this year. I think it's just gonna be an amazing season. And over here, we've got our second batch of tomatoes. We just potted these up on Monday and the grafting on these didn't work quite as well. And um, I think it was because um, to slow the top scion down i put them too far away from the heater and they got sort of messed up 
Um, so the plants weren't quite as healthy when I grafted these, but you can see here, this is the graft clip. So this is where the two tomatoes became one. And I think we got about 70% success rate on this batch, but I'm hoping next year, once I have the fancy infrastructure, we'll get much more consistent results, but we still have way more than enough. I planted a lot of extra tomatoes this year just because I screwed up last year and I wanted to have guaranteed tomatoes. So we've got a whole bunch of varieties here that I'll go over more as they start actually maturing and stuff. But um, we're looking really, really good on tomatoes and all of our nursery crops this year. All right, so now we are in my favorite greenhouse right now, which is our second cat caterpillar tunnel. And it's completely planted for spring right now. So we had uh, Claytonia, kale, baby kale, and a few other winter crops in here this winter. And that was the very first crop because we got this plastic on in August of 2023. So it's a very new tunnel. But we've been working really hard on it the last couple of weeks to get all the weeds taken care of and cultivated. And it's looking phenomenal. So we've got three beds of spring carrots to my left and right here. Um, they're looking really, really solid. Germination's looking great. And um, then we've got our some paper pot crops, Salanova lettuce right here and cilantro and dill right here. We just planted that on Monday. And um, if you look real close, you could probably tell some of the issues we're having with it. Sometimes the if we don't get the beds flat enough, sometimes the chain will pop out a little bit and then those plants will get separated from the soil and not grow. So we're still working on that. Um, but I, and I'm still tweaking the actual use of the paper pot, but it's still amazing. Cause I mean, to plant this by hand would have taken at least an hour. Um, we did, we still did this with struggle. We still did it in about 10 minutes. So it's a game changer. And once we get it really figured out, it'll be faster. Um, and behind me, we've got our uh, second crop of arugula, more Salanova lettuce we transplanted a while ago, and then broccolini. That's looking phenomenal, too. That's really starting to pop off. We planted the broccolini about two weeks ago, and it's going to be ready in May, I can tell. This is uh, called BC1611 or something uh, from Johnny's, and it grows in about 40 days. You'll get your first crop. Um, and I'm expecting in this greenhouse, that's probably going to be close to accurate. So it's looking really, really good in here. We should have a ton of food coming out of here, May through June. And um, we'll be on to our second summer crop by late June, probably in here. So um, this is why growing under plastic is so valuable. Um, even these cheaper caterpillar tunnels are almost as valuable as those fancier greenhouses. In these tunnels, we're going to get three crops this year. There is no way you could get three crops outside, um, three longer type crops. You know, you could get three crops of radishes, but you, th three crops are going to take 60 days at least to grow. You could not do that outside in our climate because we only have 120 day growing, growing season. So this caterpillar tunnel is such a game changer for for the amount of money that you pay for it, it's so valuable. No matter if you're homesteading, gardening, or farming like I am, it's very valuable. So we've got two of these 100 foot tunnels and there's 10 beds in each. And we're gonna get three crops in each one of the tunnels. Each crop will be worth roughly four to five, four to $600. So average about $500. That's basically $15,000 a year per tunnel in revenue just because it's under plastic. So um, I almost wish I started doing these Caterpillar tunnels a few years earlier because it's such a game changer. Um, and if you're doing this as a homesteading or gardening um, endeavor, if you're growing vegetables like that, you still can grow a lot more food on your land by using a Caterpillar tunnel like this. And you could get a lot nicer end walls than I have. These ones you can see behind me are flapping in the wind we're going to be putting real end walls on them soon. In a couple months, we'll be getting real end walls because that flapping plastic is not ideal. Um, but we live in a pretty windy place, so that's that's an issue for us. But, you know, these, these things are so valuable, um, and you can make them nice to work in. 
Um, I, I really, really can't recommend these farmer's friend caterpillar tunnels enough. And basically just growing anything under plastic, no matter where your climate is, you're going to benefit from the special growing space. All right, so now we're in the first cat tunnel, and basically it's a lot more of our spring crops with a few winter crops left over. we got these two beds of spinach outside here that we've harvested three or four times each, and we're just about to flip them to cabbage and parsley next week. Uh, but right here we've got our one of our beds of spring carrots. We've got four 50-foot beds worth of them. They're growing phenomenally well. This is our uh, first batch of dill and green onions with the paper pot really, really well. This dill is about to be ready to harvest. I could tell it's just really, really nice. Um, super thrilled with that. And then our first batch of sh sugar snap peas, um, which are looking pretty good. I'm seeing a little bit of yellow leaves and I'm thinking that might be just a little bit of nutrient deficiency. I hope they grow out of it. Uh, and then we've got some paper pot spinach here that we're trying out. Um, all the paper pot stuff's working pretty well. Just learning a little bit about how to plant it right, but the, the crops are growing great. They work great in the drop seeder. And then um, these first three beds right in front of me are more carrots and hot dry turnips that are direct seeded. So again, these greenhouses are just basically bumping our growing season up about 45 days, just because we've been planting since March 21st in these things. We wouldn't be planting outside till at least May 5th at the earliest for some of these crops and probably pretty much May 21st. So just growing under plastic is going to grow your growing season to 45 to 60 days all day, no matter where you're at. Um, in the south, it's probably going to be a little different because you have to cool them in the, in the summer. But um, you could put shade cloth on these things and it's just going to really make your life a lot easier. So. That's this greenhouse. All right, so to conclude our tour, we're gonna finish in the high tunnel, which is the very first greenhouse I built on the farm. And it's looking excellent in here um, with some issues. This is our very first paper pot planting of cilantro. As you can see, it is almost ready to harvest. And we planted this around March 21st or something in the ground, and then we seeded it a month before that. And it's, you know, the earliest crop of cilantro I've ever grown. So that's awesome. Very, very excited about that. We've got Napa cabbage right in front of me. Uh, that's starting to grow really nice. We'll probably be harvesting that around June. And then we've got paper pot lettuce and a lot of interplantings for our future tomatoes that are going to go in in two to three weeks in here. And it's all, most all paper pot stuff. Um, basically, we got green onions, lettuce, uh, hot dry turnips, and over on that back wall, we have a batch of carrots that I planted in February, February 2nd, I believe. And they did germinate early and they are going to be ready sometime next month. Um, I'm super excited about that. We didn't get the germination as well as I hoped. And I think that's mostly because we still got to improve our soil a little, a little bit. But that's really exciting because growing carrots and having carrots fresh in May is really tricky. So that's a big deal. And I'm excited to improve on that going forward because we could probably get carrots as early as April. if We keep getting that right in an unheated greenhouse. Heated greenhouse is a different story, but um, if you could do it in an unheated greenhouse, you could grow a lot of carrots for very little money. So and we finally got our circulation fans running today, which I'm super excited about because this has been a nightmare of a project for me. I've learned a lot about how to wire in weatherproof fittings, J boxes, all that kind of stuff. And it's a lot different than regular. Um, and I've just haven't had, I don't have a whole lot of large blocks of time to work on this kind of stuff. So I'm super stoked to get that running and they actually work. Um, so that's going to be really good for our tomatoes coming up here. The pollination will be a lot better in here for those. And it's just looking really, really good. We got a little bit of, uh, bindweed and thistle problems in here, which we'll take care of over time, but it's looking like an amazing start to the growing season. It's been super warm here this spring, and I just got a really good feeling about the rest of the season. So if you are interested in growing 
your own vegetables in your garden, I have something really cool for you in the description. I've got a garden course that we've been working on for a couple years where I teach you how to grow food a lot like this in your backyard. Basically, all the techniques I use for farming on a half an acre, I teach in an area of something like 200 square feet where you could grow way more than enough food for you and your family in a growing season just like ours. So I basically teach you how to farm your backyard. And the link for that is in the description. It's called Gardening 101 at homesteadmentors.com. And we are doing monthly wet free webinars through Homestead Mentors where I teach a lot about growing food at home uh, versus what I do here. And we're actually having another one coming up in uh, May 6th, Monday, May 6th at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You could register for that in the link in the description as well. And that will also get you notified about future webinars. We're going to try and do them every month for a little while here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next one.